We swapped over our coats and bags in the pub. I used to be fatter and she used to be thinner and people often mixed us up away from the safe confines of our desks. In the lift, say, or at the cup for colour photocopier. Easily done, I'd smile, and the person in the wrong would always do that thing with their hands, kind of covering their mouth as if to hold in a scream. It's when I realised the word always had slipped into my telling of the story about how I was always being mistaken for my colleague that I made up my mind to ask her about it. I know, she said, doesn't it prove how much we're valued in this place? This sounded like radical talk. My thoughts have been more existential. How the city permitted anonymity to the point where no one knew anybody. Maybe it's the fault of email, I said. That's it, she said, yanking me into the kitchen. They can't treat us like machines. The dishwasher's hum camouflaged our conversation from colleagues, puzzled seeing us together as if they hadn't realised we were separate entities. See you on the other side, she whispered. I typed in the password and counted down to the two o'clock meeting, studying the inspirational photographs cut from magazines and stuck to the monitor for motivation. I didn't realise I was tapping the pen I was holding, all sparkles and feathers, until Maureen's face appeared round the partition. You don't normally do that, she said. I nodded and went off for my appointment. We met in the pub at five, as arranged. Here's your biro, I said, and handed over the glittery, fluffy ballpoint. I thought you'd want to keep it. I left your pictures behind. You don't need those now.